Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about the Foxtrot and, um, and what it is, what it's not, um, some thoughts I have. My name is Ivy Schecksneider. I'm a gated horse trainer from Northern Illinois, and I've got some awesome slow motion clips and footage to show you, uh, along with some real time audio so you can hear what the Foxtrot is. Feel free to comment below and I will try to uh, answer your questions. And we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm hoping everything is working now. If everything is working and you can hear me, go ahead and comment if you're watching the live video. If you're watching this video after it's gone live, it won't matter. Um, so you don't have to comment and reply to that. Um, if you want to see this video again, you'll be able to, as it will be available after the live stream has finished. All right, so I'm going to try to go into technical as well as just basic understanding of what the Foxtrot is and hope that that um, can help you guys. And I want, I don't want to get it too technical, but some people really like the more technical explanations and uh, sometimes people prefer a more simple, practical explanation. Now, I will tell you that any breed of gated horse can do the Foxtrot. Rocky Mountains, Kentucky Mountains, Spotted Saddle Horse, Tennessee Walkers, Icelandics, Pasifinos, they can all do the Foxtrot. Now, it doesn't mean that they all will, but they all can do it. Um, and it just may take a little bit of training, but they all can do it. Hey, Lisa. And as I ask questions or respond, it does take me a little while to see, but I will do my best to answer your questions. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. And... I'm going to show you this first clip. Now, this first clip, I believe, is a foxtrot or an easy doing a foxtrot, and it is in slow motion. Now, what I'd like you to see as you start to watch it is to see that the diagonals. So, with a pacey horse, you watch the two legs on the side closest to you, which would be, you know, both left legs or both right legs. But with a foxtrot, that's not true. You actually want to watch the legs, the diagonals. So, either the front left and the back right or the front right and the back left. Okay, but before I get into that, I forgot. Before I get into that, we're going to talk about the definition of a foxtrot. Okay, so I took this right off of Wikipedia. And um, some of it I agree with, and some of it I don't, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you, and you obviously can go find that definition as well. The foxtrot is a four-beat broken diagonal gait, and diagonal simply means trotty, in which the front foot of the diagonal pair lands before the hind, eliminating the moment of suspension, giving a smooth, sure-footed ride. I agree. It is, a, it is a broken trot, but it has the added element of needing a head nod. So you can have a broken trot, but then if you don't have the head nod, it's not a fox trot. So this is the part that I, I mean, they say it correctly, but I'm going to disagree with it. The gait is sometimes described as having the horse walk with the front feet and trot with the back. That's so common. It's so common, I want to. I wish I could rip it up and throw that definition away. Because it is described that way, and if you say that's what it looks like, I'm totally fine with that. But you have to understand that is not, in fact, what is happening. It is simply a way to describe it. Um, so they are not walking in front and trotting in back. They are, in fact, almost trotting. But there's separation between the front and the back diagonal. Uh, then it goes on to say, in a fox trot, the horse must keep one front foot on the ground at all times, displaying a sliding motion with the hind legs. Meh, kind of. They do keep legs on the ground, but most of the gates always have a foot on the ground making them smoother than the trot. Um, so there's a, a little bit of a technical definition. And hey, Jennifer, and hey, Linda, great to have you guys on here. We've got 33 people watching so far. Let's go ahead and get into some footage. Here we go. This is a Foxtrot. Um, this is a clinic at, in Ohio. And you can see, if you watch the diagonal, which would be the front either front left, back right, or front right, back left, you can see that they move forward, but that the front lands before the back, okay? So as you're watching them, and I don't think I can pause this to show you, but as you're watching it, watch the diagonal. See how they move forward together, but don't land at the same time. The front foot lands before the right. And the other thing you can do to see if it's an even gait is to count the footfalls. So you start counting as a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Do you hear how it's not perfectly even? It's a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That means it's not a perfectly even four beat gate. So 
it is a four beat gate, but it is not perfectly even, which is one reason why I don't personally like the Fox Trap because I don't feel it's as smooth as the saddle rack. And the saddle rack is the evenly timed four beat gate. However, the Foxtrot gets smoother and smoother the closer it gets to a four beat. Now, the other thing I want you to see as we're looking at this is notice the head nod, okay? If a, a horse queen doing a broken trot, which is still four beats, but if they don't have a head nod, it is not a fox trot. Now, you're going to see horses with their heads at different places in terms of high and low and doing a fox trot um, in these other videos I'm going to show you. And they're all examples of a fox trot. Um, and again, I'm not doing this in the show ring. So it's it's still a fox trot. It's just different. Okay. And let's see. Hey, Baron. Hey, D. Good to hear from you guys. Um, okay. Next clip. This is, um, this is Terry's horse. Um, I think this is a three-year-old when I did this video, and she's a rescue from the Appalachian Trainer. Face off one of the foals that was born from a mare they rescued. And what we're going to do, same thing, you watch for the same kinds of movement. See how the uh, diagonals move almost together. Now notice the head bob. It's very slight. It's there with every stride. Um, and if you count the footfalls, let's start counting. So it's a uh, one, two three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is a foxtrot that is almost a saddle rack because of how even the gate is. But there's that little head nod making it a little bit more like a foxtrot. And here, and with another horse, you're going to see that it actually gets what I would call, it turns into almost a trot. And you'll be able to hear that difference in the next video we're going to show. Okay, so you should be able to hear this. This, see how even it is, but see that head nod? Trot. All right, there and you there, go. see how it Stay turns back. to a trot there you go. right there? That, uh, here's it in slow motion. It is a saddle rack there, but you got a little bit of a head nod. It's moving just toward the fox trot, just barely. And then right up here, she gets a little bit trotty. And this is going downhill, which, no, right there, trot. And hear that footfall changes? Can you guys hear that? Okay. And same horse, again, just I want you guys to hear this and see this. Right here, it's going to change to the sound changes. And she's going to trot. All right, there you go. Clean yeah, back. Right there, there you go. That's when it moves into a trot. All right. Hey, Jane and Bonnie and Nicole, thanks for joining us. Okay. Again, if the quality isn't super good, you should be able to watch it and have a little bit better quality. Uh, later. Sometimes it's a little bit tough to get the good quality while doing a live video. Here we go. Here's another foxtrot here. See a very subtle head nod. Um, the footfalls are very close to even. Um, right there got a little trotty and I lifted my reins up to get out of that trot. But it's still an even four beat gait. Or not even. It's still a four-beat gate, making it a fox trot. And the head nod is our big clue. There's only three gates. Well, there could be very few exceptions, but there's only three gates that give you a head nod: the fox trot, the flat walk, and the running walk. And when I say head nod, I mean the head goes up and down in time to the horse's footfalls. This is different than a horse being lame. Uh, the horse is, uh, you know, is not lame. Is it's so it's not like the horse is limping, but it's bobbing its head up and down in time to uh, the footfalls. All right, so those are the clips I have, and we can look at those again. Um, I would like to hear what questions you guys have, if any. Um, the big thing is that the fox trot is somewhat misunderstood. People will be riding a fox trotter and assuming they're fox trotting, but fox trotters don't always um, fox trot. Just like walkers don't always do a flat walk and running walk. And the gated horses can do all different kinds. Um, and so there's a lot of misconception. I personally would rather have the saddle rack than the fox trot. Um, but it is a matter of taste. I know a few people have come. They're like, yep, we really want to train the fox trot. Totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Notice none of the heads are high. Notice on these various clips how the horses have a loose rein. Here we go. This horse. I put a little bit of pressure on because I was asking him to get out of the trot. And then he gets a loose rein. I'm not holding him in gate. Then this horse as well. She has a really loose rein. This mare is just awesome. 
and then again on this horse. Notice the reins aren't tight. I have put a little bit of pressure to get the head down, and then I give a loose rein. And, and then she moves a little bit to right, the trot. That's all right. And then again on this horse, not holding the reins tight and still getting a nice fox trot. And yeah, it is a little bit uh, close to the rack. Um, that's partly just because what we have is um, it's it's four beat. It's very close, but a rack does not have a head nod. Okay, uh, absolutely for sure. The saddle rack or the rack does not have a head nod, and that's one thing that really helps you set apart what the gates are doing. Uh, another tip to tell when a horse is pacing or doing a stepping pace: sometimes, sometimes they have a head nod that goes side to side. Okay, but not always. Somebody says, you know, hunk of meat and two potatoes. There's a lot of different um, noises, you you know, sounds you could say. I say pucka, 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 because it's easy to remember and it's perfectly even. Um, and that's what you're looking for, is that perfectly even. The closer you get to pucka, pucka, the smoother um, your gait is going to be, whether you're doing the, the rack or the foxtrot. And that's always the case. So, any other questions? I thought this was going to be a longer video, but I went through my footage pretty quickly. Um, again, my name is Ivy Shack Snyder. I'm a gated horse trainer in Winslow, or in, in Northern Illinois, in Winslow, Illinois. And I'm doing these videos every day. Um, right now I'm doing Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, and 2 p.m. Pacific Time. They will be available for you to watch later on, uh, this page on Ivy's Glide Gate, so join there. And I am trying to do relevant topics um, coming up this week. We're also doing groundwork, and I'm not even sure what the other topic is. Uh, but I have so many different things planned, from talking about what the saddle rack is, what the pace is, stepping pace, talking about how to get connected with your horse at Liberty, more about clicker training, and about um, protected contact in clicker training and using food. Um, I have uh, more topics. Um, like uh, working on the on what to look for um, when you're looking to buy a horse. And most of you probably already have your horses, but there could be some people out there that are unaware of some of the things that would be helpful for them when looking to buy a gated horse. And I really want to uh, help them kind of figure that out. What are some things you can look for? What are some things you can avoid? And uh, so I also take suggestions for other ideas on what you guys want to do with um, these future videos. I've got so much planned, though. I could, I know we're in quarantine or shelter in place or whatever it is your particular state is doing, but I have topics for a couple of months. So that's good news for you guys, even if we're still stuck here. Hey, Pam. Bonnie says, are there particular gates that are physically better for the long-term soundness of the horse? That is is a great question. So long-term soundness of the horse is, uh, the, so the fox trot's good, um, and the saddle rack. All of these, the stepping pace could be okay, but if the horse has their head up, it's going to be very difficult for it to be good for the horse. You want gates that uh, get the horse to lift their back and use their hind end. Um, the fox trot and the saddle rack do that. And then you may, I mean, you could do the flat walk and the running walk. Again, I don't find those as comfortable to ride, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and obviously the trot is totally fine as well. But again, with the trot, I want to see a lower head. This, the idea isn't that they trot with a high head. It's that they trot and are balanced. Basically, any of the gates we want to do are good as long as the horse is balanced. And that's the tricky thing about gated horses, is getting that balance correct and the footfalls, and they don't do it on their own. I mean, quarter horses and Arabians are often not that well balanced and have their heads up and need to be trained to be balanced. Why else would we need to have so many videos about training, you know, Western pleasure horses or reining horses or, you know, pick your discipline? It's because it's difficult to train any horse to carry themselves balanced, but it's very difficult to get a gait from a horse if they're not balanced. And so bringing their nose in, putting a bigger bit on, putting different trimming angles on their feet. Those are all just band-aids that may or may not work. And the idea is to get balance and not just to use gimmicks because they don't actually work. Okay, that was a great question. I'm glad you asked that. So what else can I talk about for you guys today? 
Uh, the other thing I want to mention too is if you're if you've enjoyed this video or the other live videos, please share this. The reason is one to grow my business. So you know I have to say I have to admit that that's part of it. But uh, the other reason to share the videos is so we can get the word out about gated horses because there's a lot of people out there that don't understand uh, how gated horses are, how they how to ride them, how to do these different things, and what the gate is and what what, how to look for gated horses, how to get them balanced, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. And you can help me help other people by making sure that um, we're sharing good information. So please, if this video has helped you at all, please just share the video uh, on a group, on your personal page. That's awesome. All right, question. Um, Elizabeth says, hi from Germany. That's so awesome. Uh, wondering why my Tennessee walking horse mare tends to fall into the cross canner. She starts out correctly, then switches to the cross canner, especially in the arena on the lunge line. Do I have any videos properly training the canner? Um, the only videos I have on the canner right now are videos that talk about, um, how to get the canner started. But you ask a great question. So one of the reasons, and one of the things is that gated horses are not balanced. Many of them have had bad breeding, and so they are not very well balanced just from that perspective. And so they need to be taught to be balanced to hold the canner. So they start out, they have a good canner, and then they lose their balance. And so I don't have any videos, but you want to do a lot of leg yields, a lot of lateral work, um, head down, stopping and backing up, and transitions. Get that transition where she can do a walk to canter transition really easily. And only ask her to hold the canter for a few strides, and then go back to the walk, and then do that transition again. And you can also put out canter poles. There tend to be poles that you put down on the ground, maybe... 10 to 15 feet apart depending on your horse's stride and then you canter over them and by having you know 10 poles set out the horse has to continually lift themselves up to have a good canter stride and that can work really well um, i've worked with getting a much more balanced canter uh, by doing that and there's a, if you have a dressage background um, any of the exercises for strengthening the canter work on gated horses just as well as regular horses good question uh, Jennifer says, I sometimes feel like you're moving along pretty good in the horse's training and then have worse before better. I have recently, I recently think I experienced this. However, I did ride with the non-gated horses on Sunday and did a lot of just head down stuff. I think Monday possibly with my gelding was possibly sore. Do I recommend any stretching? That's so good of you to recognize that it could have been a muscle soreness issue. So many people just want to say that the horse was stubborn. I will tell you that it's very common for horses to have good days and then go backwards. It's very common and it's especially common with the muscle soreness. I've seen that in clinics where we've worked a horse, not hard, but they've changed a lot. And I think the next day they tend to be sore. And so that's a very good point that a lot of times it can be muscle soreness and the horses don't have a way to tell us that they're sore. And so them acting out or being what we would call acting out or being misbehaving is just them communicating. So good job recognizing that. Stretching exercises, I honestly, I'm not trained in that, so I'm not going to recommend any. Um, just getting the horse moving in a long and loose frame can help, um, but any horse can get stiff and have a bad day. Um, but that is a great question. So YouTube it. There's some good books out there. Um, uh, so yeah, Karen, I'm glad you love the videos. Elizabeth says, can a hard trotting horse be taught to gait? Okay, I've read books that say that a quarter horse can be taught to gait. Um, I'm not going to say it's not possible, but I'm going to say, why in the world would you do that? You can get a gated horse and you still have a hard time getting them to gate. Why bother with a quarter horse? So I am probably never going to attempt it. So if you want to go for it, I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> um, Jill says horse four beats, but sometimes sound like one foot is a lighter step. Is that a stepping pace? Um, I, maybe, Jill, I'm not quite sure what your question is. If it's not an evenly timed gait, it's either a broken trot, foxtrot, or a stepping pace. Without hearing it, I couldn't exactly tell you what's going on. Uh, so, uh, I wish I could help you a little bit more. If it doesn't sound perfectly like pucka, 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 it could be because your horse has shoes on the front, or it could be because they are doing a stepping pace, or the broken trot, or the foxtrot. So quickly, we're just going to go over these, uh, just show these fox trotting videos. This one, again, I love hearing this fox trot here. So awesome.
That little head nod doesn't have to have much of a head nod for it to be a foxtrot. There, got a little bit trotty. So I lift my reins, corrected it, and gave the loose rein again. You'll see that in slow motion. See the little head nod there? She's uh, This horse is also clacking. Basically, her teeth are touching, and so there's a clacking noise with every stride on the head nod. It's one reason why I'm not a big fan of the foxtrot, because that can happen. And oh, one thing I did forget to mention. One thing that'll help you tell the difference between like a foxtrot um, and other gates is a lot of times what I feel from the saddle. Now, this is not true all the time, but what I feel is it feels like with every stride, this back of the saddle lifts up. And the more it lifts up, the more like a trot it's likely to feel. Where if it's very close to being even, you're not likely to feel that as much. So like on this horse, um, and actually I want to go to actually this horse. This horse, the fox trot was so close to a saddle rack, so very smooth, that there was hardly any of that movement here. Um, my hips are still moving, but not as much as they are for this horse. This horse has more of an actual fox trot, which means there's a lot more movement going on than in the saddle rack. Um, which is not a bad thing, it's a different feel and a different movement. Though every horse is different and some will be smoother than others. Alright, um, let me know if there's any more questions, guys. And thank you so much for joining. If you want more videos like this, um, I have more videos that are not available for free that are on my private training group. It's a one-time fee of $100 and you join for a lifetime membership. It's not a thing that you renew every year or every month. Um, I understand financially a lot of people aren't able to do that and that's totally fine. I get that. Um, and that's fine. I'll keep doing the free videos and providing these. Keep asking questions. Diana, I'm so glad you love the videos. Um, and watch out because hopefully in a few weeks I will be releasing a brand new gated training DVD um, with hours of footage, including slow motion footage like this, as well as video from the GoPro while I'm riding horses, showing you a complete training sessions of what I'm doing. And I'm very excited about this. I just have to finish it. <laughs> Antonia and Nina. I don't know. I'm really bad. And Antonina. How do I increase the Tennessee walking horse hind legs from the saddle? Um, well, head down helps horses um, use their hind legs more. And using poles on the ground uh, wide enough that they have to step farther is a good way to do that, I think is what you're uh, meaning. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining today. It's really fun to have a live audience and to answer questions in real time. And let me know what else um, I can help you guys with. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to check. I think tomorrow we're talking about groundwork. Now, that will only happen if it is not raining for the live video. Because um, I'm not actually sure if it's going to be raining or not. Um, tomorrow here. It's raining right now. So I don't know if oh, you probably can see on the window behind me. Um... And so then, yeah, groundwork for gated horses. It's just going to be some basics, and hopefully we'll do more advanced stuff as we go along and as I get working with my horses a little bit more, but it might help you guys right now. So that's kind of the plan, and um, see how I can help you guys. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to do more videos. I actually, this is very fun. I always look forward to doing this every day and getting the material together like for the fox trot today so thank you so much guys i hope you have a great day and the weather warms up and the mud goes away and you'll get to ride stay safe remember it's a journey you don't have to get it done today or this week or next month you have time just keep working at it and you'll get it so you got this